You're staying with News Center. Now we want to dive into that conversation, administrative justice. What do you know about it? Well, with me here today is Lucy Ndungu, who is an Access to Information Commissioner. Good morning, and thank you so much for your time. Good morning. All right, so when you talk about access, you know, administrative justice, there's so much into it. Maybe you could break that down for our viewers. When we talk about administrative justice, I would prefer if I start by talking about ourselves. Okay. Who are we? We are a commission established under Chapter 15 of our Constitution, mm -hmm. and our work is to deal with maladministration. And what is maladministration? Yeah. Maladministration is where public officers, public institutions carry out their job which is against their mandate, mm -hmm. or they overstep their mandate, or they do things not authorized by any law. Okay. And uh, maladministration can be manifested in many ways. It can be, number one, by being, uh, cutting themselves improperly. They handle you not rightly or not even doing what they are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. It can also be by delay, whereby they keep, their, uh, they keep away from you for a long time without giving you the services you require, for, for example, giving you a certificate. Mm -hmm. Also, it can also be by lack of, lack of giving the right information and also lack of giving the necessary documentation as and when you require them. Yeah. It can also be manifested whereby officers leave offices and refuse to carry out their duties expeditiously. Mm -hmm. That is what I can, call up, I can talk about as maladministration. It is actually going against the mandate of the institution. Yeah. And, and how many cases do you get of maladministration? I would assume it's a pile. Since incep inception of uh, the Commission on Administrative Justice mm. in 2011, we have had about 40,000 cases. Okay. Uh, but we have been able to deal with 65% of those cases uh, through de using alternative dispute resolution mechanism, through issuing of determinations, mm -hmm. and also deferring some to yeah. other institutions which can deal with the maladministration. Okay. So most people know about the office of the ombudsman. What's the connection between that and administrative justice? The Commission on Administrative Justice is basically the ombudsman of Kenya. Mm -hmm. And uh, the name ombudsman is gender. It can be a woman or it can be a man. Okay. Currently we have our chair is a woman, Honorable Kajuju. And uh, the Commission on Administrative Justice deals with maladministration, meaning that it is the people's representation. Mm -hmm. People, m when they want to complain against the government officials, can only come to us. And that is the ombudsman, the meaning of the ombudsman, the yeah. representative of the people. Number two, as a commission, we also deal with access to information, whereby all records held by government of uh, institutions at the national level and at the county level must be given to the citizen as and where when they require them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, you've mentioned that since 2011 you've had around 40,000 cases and 65% of those cases have been done away with. What stops the other percentage? What is hindering that? Yes, and uh, I will start by saying that we are not a court of law. Yeah. We normally deal alternative dispute resolution mechanism, that is conciliation, mediation. And uh, when you apply alternative dispute resolution mechanism, you are able to solve most of the disputes. However, at times, we do have unresponsiveness from government institution, and uh, we are not able to solve those cases, mostly because our act does not make our determination uh, like a court order. It is not implementable. You can only now go to court and enforce it. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the hindrances which we have encountered. And as a commission, we have really petitioned through parliament that that power whereby our, our decisions forms becomes like a court order and can only be uh, 
challenged in a court of law mm -hmm. or at the high court. We are happy to say that access to information law is very good. Our orders are like a court order and they can only be challenged at the high court. Mm. And uh, that has given us an edge as we implement access to information. Okay. We have really done better law than uh, when we implement mal administration. And it's a good thing you mentioned that because more often than not you hear Kenyans being urged to you know, seek dispute resolution mechanism more than wait to go to court. Do you think Kenyans are embracing this type of, you know, uh, what, what would be the right term to call it, dispute resolution? Al alternative so, dispute yes. resolution mechanism? Yes, since 2010 when the new constitution became progressive and gave us that way of dealing with dispute, we have realized that we have made headway. We have been able to solve small disputes, especially disputes which involve family issues, which involve uh, government uh, ac actions, which are, even if you go to court, sometimes you may not get a remedy, especially administrative action. Yeah. And that can, has actually given Kenyans a better way of understanding how things are done. When you come to reconcile, when you come to mediate, <coughs> or when you come to negotiate, I get to know where you are ailing from. Yeah. What is it that you want? And how can I help you? If I, as a government institution, if you tell me I need this certificate for this, I need it urgently because I have to travel to India for medical reasons. When we discuss those things, and the alternative dispute resolution mechanism, we solve issues. Also, Bearing in mind that uh, customarily all African countries had that in their system and it bringing it back has been very, very positive. Yeah, and, and nothing in this world doesn't come without its challenges. What would you say are some of the challenges facing that commission? I would say that um, as a commission, we are supposed to implement two acts of parliament. That is Commission on Administrative Justice uh, Act, which deals with mal administration or addressing mal administration, we are also supposed to implement access to information law, which deal with access to information and enforcement of it. And since we got the new mandate in 2016, we have not been given enough resources mm -hmm. in terms of human beings. Uh, uh, we have about two, 290 uh, workforce in our structure but we only have 111. Wow, that's we are stretched. only in six counties. Uh, and we should be in all counties since we implement maladministration and access to information up to the county level. Yeah. And you know at the county level, that's where information is needed. Mm -hmm. That's where maladministration is being carried out on Kenyans who do not understand their rights. So we feel that it is important that we have enough human resources. We also have in, uh, enough funds to establish offices in at least in most counties. Mm -hmm. We also need funds to carry out public education, also advocacy, so that the, so that these rights which are enshrined in our constitution are known by the citizens. You, you've mentioned that you're in six counties. Which counties are there? We are in Kisumu. Mm -hmm. We are in uh, Uansigishu. We are in Mombasa. We are in Isiolo. We are also in Yahururu and Garissa. Okay. We do intend to open others, which will cover now the side, the, the Roa Nyanza, that is Kisi area, and Western region, okay. given the resources. Given the resources, yes. of course, which we are hopeful for. Yes. You know, but when you talk about the fact that this is an office that listens to the people, for lack of a better way of putting it, what are some of the channels that the citizens can actually reach out? Because most people don't know about this. Yes, we have uh, opened up, you know, because of the digital age. You can either come to our offices directly, the offices I have mentioned, and yeah. at the headquarters to Ayakwit, West, West, West Ed Towers. You may also use email. We have uh, an email dealing with complaints at ombudsman.geo.ke. You can find it in our website. We also have a public portal which we launched on in the beginning of this year, whereby we deal with complaints handling mechanism, whereby you fill in the form using the portal. You can also call. We have a dial-up call mm -hmm. where you can call us. And we are also on social media. We have Twitter handle, we have um, Facebook, and at times we find that uh, people also use other means. For example, they may use the, 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 the elected officials like the parliamentarians who bring cases to us. 
we also get cases through other sister commissions. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are the sister commissions? The sister commissions is the, the National Gender and Equality Commission okay. and the Kenya National and Human Rights Commission. Okay. We do implement chapter uh, the, the, the chapters on human rights and we, we, are, we are also formed under one article 59.4 which is the sister commission the national human rights Commission and equality commission okay yeah you know i'm trying to figure out the backlog that you must have number one you require 290 staff you have 111 and here you are you're seeing complaints coming through left right center not only physical but equally digital how does the commission deal with that? Because it should be a challenge of its own. Yes. Uh, what we have uh, we have uh, decided to do and uh, our strategic plan yeah. is to ensure that we partner with other institutions, especially the issues of part, uh, advocacy. So we partner with uh, Kenya School of Government when we do education for public officers. We partner with civil society like the, uh, the Media Council of Kenya, which train journalists on access to information. We also partner with the, the, the donors who give us funds and we carry out projects like the JZ, mm -hmm. also the World Bank, and uh, the Women Women when it is issues of gender. And also we, uh, we also work with uh, certain departments in government, for okay. example, the gender the, the gender department, the, the, the institutions have mentioned the commissions themselves. Uh, and at the same time, we really like working directly with the media and talking to the Kenyans, okay. like we are doing now. Yeah, which is part of, you know, <laughs> sort of yeah, uh, creating that awareness so mm. that people can know that you exist, which is really important. But then, just to take you forward, the government recently gazetted access to information regulation 2023. How significant is it when it comes to gov g good governance in the country? Yes, uh, I am happy that uh, finally we do have uh, the regulations which are going to operationalize the way access to information law is being implemented by CAJ yeah. and all other institutions. And how important it is to us is that you cannot implement a law without providing the procedures, how, how things should be done. And in, this, uh, in these regulations, we have three pillars. It has provided on how pro, uh, proactive disclosure by government institution is to be carried out. Yeah. It has given out the, the, the ways and the means. It has also given us the procedure on how requests for information, including requests from journalists, should be given. It has also given us a, pro, a, 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 a way out on how government records should be kept so that mm -hmm. it is easy to retrieve them, it's easy to give them and to maintain them. And finally, it has also given us a way of ensuring that we are together with the people because we did these regulations through public participation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we got to know what they need uh, as an improvement of the actual law okay so access to information when you look at it in whole held by the government is very critical especially in the promotion of the accountability and transparency in governance what are you doing to enforce access to information laws yes I, I would start by saying that the first thing as a commission we did is to embark on coming up with these regulations okay and this obviously is a milestone for the commission number two as a commission we did come up with a strategic plan and insisted that access to information is one of the pillars of how we do business as the commission. Mm. We have a department called Access to Information Department. And we also have signed many MOUs with different institutions to ensure that we, popular, we, populate, we, pop, we popularize access to information at the national level and at the county level. And one of the most important um, MOU we have signed is the MOU with the Media Council of Kenya, yes. which trains journalists who carry out investigation, investigative journalists on and they use access to information as a means we have also a memorandum of understanding with the council of governance and in that memorandum of understanding we have insisted that at the county level that is where information should be given to the people and we have agreed that we should partner all the time go down there and come up with committees on access to information also come up with a model law which is suited to the county that, that is, they domesticate the national law at the county level. Uh, further, we have also agreed as a commission that we should continuously 
work with other government institutions and this is where we train government officials at the Kenya School of Government on access to information. I okay. hope I've answered. Yes, you have. So for the viewers who are watching us, maybe is there anything that you'd love to add? Yes, I would love to request them to continuously partner with us, continuously make complaints using all the methods we have available for them, and not to shy away pointing out where the commission may be going wrong or where the commission is doing right. Yeah. And in terms of access to information, let them partner with their counties and in, in, interpret all what is happening at the county level, including the projects, the budget making process, including the load which is passing in front of them. Let mm -hmm. them question what is happening, including the, let them ask which crops should they plant using access to information. And that way we will be able to truly implement Article 35 of our Constitution. All right, thank you so much. Now I know of a few things about administrative justice that I did not know of, and I thank you for that. Lucy Ndungu, who is an Access to Information Commissioner, and as always, you're always welcome so that we can push this conversation forward. You know, we need to help each other after all. Well, thank you so much. Now moving on, the signing of cooperation agreement and passing of the bill that will anchor the NOREB into law and equally run insecurity in the volatile Kirio Valley to top in agenda.